we're all familiar with that expression. Third time is a charm. It's a, an expression that is intended to give comfort to people who fail twice at something. The third time is a charm. You're going to have good luck. It's going to work out. Everything's going to be okay. But that's not the expression that fits the gospel lesson we have today. It's not obvious from the lesson itself what is really going on here. But when the disciples, James and John, come to Jesus with their request, they're doing something that really does not make any sense at all. Because three times they have heard Jesus talking about what is in store for him when he gets to Jerusalem. And they have missed it completely. They've heard Jesus talking about it. They've heard Jesus describing what's going to happen, how he's going to be betrayed into the hands of, of the religious authorities, and how he's going to ultimately be crucified. And they don't get it at all. You recall the three instances where Jesus uh, tells them these things. The first is at Caesarea Philippi, where Jesus was with his disciples there in the northern part of Galilee, in that pagan territory where the Roman temple is and where all the gods of the Romans are being uh, worshipped. And Jesus says, to them, who do people say that I am? And they answer with different answers. And then he says to them, but who do you say that I am? And Peter gets up and says, you are the Christ. Now, that's all he says in Mark's Gospel. You are the Christ. But what he means by that is you are the anointed one of God. You are the one promised for centuries through the prophets that God would send into the world in order to liberate the people of God and to reign upon the throne of God's people and rule over them forever. You are the anointed one, the Messiah. But even Peter didn't get it. Because immediately when Jesus started to respond to that, he said, Peter, the Son of Man is going to be betrayed into the hands of the religious authorities. The Son of Man is going to be falsely accused and, and put on trial and, and uh, convicted and condemned to death. And then he's going to be crucified. And on the third day rise. And Peter refuses to hear that. You recall that story? And Peter, and Peter finally hears Jesus say, Get behind me, Satan. For that's not God's will, what you're saying. The second time that uh, Jesus gives a prediction about what the future has in store for him is when Jesus is with uh, three of his disciples up on the top of the Mount of Transfiguration. He's there with Peter, the one who is just uh, messed up, and James, and John, the two who show up in the gospel lesson today. And there they are on the Mount of Transfiguration, and the glory of God is shining upon Jesus, and the voice comes from heaven, you are my beloved Son with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. Jesus comes down from the mountain, and there at the base of the mountain, Jesus uh, sees his disciples are, are struggling because they tried to cast out a demon from a little boy, and they just couldn't do it. Jesus says, you're not praying enough. Cast out the demon. And then he goes on to say to them, the Son of Man is going to be betrayed into the hands of the religious authorities. He's going to be falsely accused. He's going to be put on trial. He's going to be condemned to death. And he's going to be crucified. And on the third day rise. They still haven't gotten the message. And now, on the third occasion, it comes right after the gospel lesson that you heard last Sunday, when Jesus encounters that rich man who says to him, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus says, go sell everything you have, give it to the poor and you'll have treasure in heaven, and then come and follow me. And the man goes away sorrowful. And Jesus says how hard it is for anyone to enter into the kingdom of God. And then he goes on to say, the Son of Man is going to be brought before the chief priests and the elders of the people. Going to be falsely accused, put on trial, condemned to death, 
and crucify, and on the third day rise. Then James and John come to Jesus with a question. Immediately after Jesus has told them exactly what's going to happen to him, these guys come with this crazy question. When you come into your glory, when you're sitting on your throne, when you are in charge of the whole shoot match, then I want to uh, be on your right side and, and put John on your left side in your glory. Secretary of State, Secretary of War, we will be right there with you in your glory. They just couldn't get it. Third time's a charm. No, probably three strikes and you're out. Because that's what happened in this story. They just couldn't understand what Jesus was talking about. Because they didn't know what his true mission was. You recall how Jesus had been up in Galilee preaching, teaching, and healing for some three years among the people uh, of Galilee. And then finally he... he set his eyes on Jerusalem, and he said to his disciples, come on, we have to go. And we're going to head down. And so they traveled down along the Jordan River. I'm looking at my mind at, at a map here. And they come down along the Jordan River, and they wind up in, in the wilderness of Judea, where John the Baptist had been preaching, where Jesus had started out his ministry. And there, uh, and that's where this encounter takes place. But Jesus is about to lead his disciples up to Jerusalem, knowing that the time had finally come. They simply didn't get it. They were expecting Jesus to become the king. They were expecting him to have power and wealth and, and prestige and, and rule over all the people of Israel. Throw all those Romans and everybody else out of our country and allow us to be a pure nation once more. And Jesus said, no, you don't really, you don't really understand. Because he knew that the ultimate purpose of his life was to be found in the sacrifice he would make upon the cross. The cross was the purpose of his life. And here in their selfishness and their ambition, they were operating at cross purposes with Jesus. We have left everything to follow you. We deserve some kind of reward. And Jesus says to the disciples, James and John, he says, uh, can you drink the same cup I'm going to drink? Can you be baptized with the baptism with which I'm going to be baptized? And naively they say, oh, of course, of course. Not realizing what he's talking about again. And then he gives them the assurance, yes, you will. You will suffer. You will die for the gospel. But there will be a reward. For you see, for many people, the story of Jesus ends on Good Friday. For many people, the story of Jesus, even if they get to the cross, ends there. But for us, who follow Jesus, we know the story does not end there. Three days later, God raised him from death. Three days later, God brought him from death to life. And because God raised Jesus from death to life, we too have been raised from death to life, and we too can share in the resurrection victory of our Lord Jesus Christ. What a difference that makes in how we see ourselves and how we look at the world and how we see our lives being lived out in the world. We've been put here with a purpose. We've been put here to fulfill God's intention for the world. And God has given us all the gifts that we need as his people to be able to set to the task and to accomplish the things that he has in store for us. So, as God's people, how important it is that we realize that uh, this life we have doesn't have to be lived under a cloud. We don't have to live in despair because there's so much evil in the world. We don't have to be overcome by all the things that frighten us. We don't have to be worried about those uncertainties of life that, that challenge us all the time because we know that the future is in God's hands and he is already there waiting for us. 
what a joy we have as people of God. Let us live our lives as God intended us to live. Being aware of God's presence in the world, even though there are so many people who deny God's presence. Being aware of the needs of our neighbors, where there are so many people who simply prefer to ignore them. Thankful for God's blessings, which many people don't even recognize. And aware of the opportunities and the gifts that God has given us, that we might use those gifts in a way that exalt God, that honor God, that serve our neighbor, that strengthen our community and enhance the life of the world. God has given us so much, and you are the ones whom he has given that gift to. Use the gift you have. Allow that resurrection power to make its presence known through you each day. Keep in mind the fact that the purpose of God is seen when we take up our cross and follow Jesus. Amen. Amen.